Good morning, ladies. How are you? I hope everything goes well. In our today's session, we're going to see our third model. So here, my name is Angela Rosona. I'm going to be with you for this session. So this one is upper intermediate English one. Let's see the following information. So first of all, we're going to talk about the general feedback and some comments according to the previous activities you already submitted. In the second part, we're going to talk about our learning objectives for this model three, the grammar review for this model, some tasks which you are going to do, you're going to start working with, and the final comments. If any question you, you have, don't forget to contact me. So the general feedback and submitted activities. The most of you um, have submitted the activities on time, so I really want to co congratulate you because of that. Because you know that when you ask for extra time, like this extra time will be issued upon certain conditions and assignments, which will be graded with four as maximum grade. So uh, it's very important that for this third model, you start working with those assignments on time. Previously, it's just like a suggestion. Don't forget to do your assignments with enough time. Because sometimes uh, I can find that some of a student's homeworks were incomplete or inaccurate, right? In this order of ideas, it is better to take some time like before in order to accomplish with the different objectives we have for each of the tasks. All right. Uh, also, it's important to bear in mind that you should double check the structures for each activity. You know that sometimes when we read just once, uh, maybe we have some questions and we don't have like clear all the structures we need like to bear in mind. But for like this kind of tax, it's important to avoid using translators because they don't help your learning at your best, right? So let's see our learning objectives, what will you will learn during this model. So during the first model, we will work to learn how to use following grammar topics, or strengths, and weaknesses adjectives, the future continuous, plus future perfect, so phrasal verbs related to job interviews and how plus adjectives and other questions. From our grammar review, uh, let's see some vocabulary narrator to strengths and weaknesses. We know that this uh, kind of topic we use when we're talking about or when we uh, really want to focus on an interview. It's a very common question for an interviewer asking for this topic or this content. In that way, it's important to just express what strengths we have in order to give or to support or just to try to improve like the company's objectives, the company's goals, right? So in that part, uh, let's see some vocabulary related to this content. For strengths, we have outgoing, discipline, generous, kind, smart, organized, respectful, and hardworking. Weaknesses, disorganized, lazy, naive, talkative, egotistical, stubborn, and punctual, grumpy, and problems. So you know that each of those words are important at the moment that we are uh, describing ourselves, right? But uh, it is not only later to mention those words because the most important thing is to explain, yes, in what contents are, yes, in what contents we can relate, we can talk about those words in order just to support our ideas. So the future continues or is going to be a main topic for this model. When we use it, we use this topic to describe actions that will be in process in a specific moment of the future. So it means that when we really want to express something that is going to happen later, yeah, we can use future continuous. Let's see one example. 
Colombia and Argentina will be playing as host countries in the next Cup America in 2020, right? It's, it is true? Yes. So we are describing an option that is going to happen later. Uh, in this part, we can see some examples according to positive, negative statements, questions using with yes, no, or WH question. I will be traveling all over the world by the time I retire, right? So you are talking about something that you are going to do later when you retire from your job. My dad will not be working tomorrow. He's traveling tonight, right? So in this part, you're talking about an option uh, about your father, yeah? Like explaining why this person is not going to do one action, yeah, regarding to something else that he has to do. Will you be working in your dream job once you finish your career? All right, this one is an yes, no question. As you can see right there, we are going to change the order of the subject. So we have in the middle, first we have will, and after the subject, we have be. So for future continuous, yes, we need to use a subject plus will plus the verb be. After that, the verb followed by ing. This one is just the grammar structure for this subject. And if we really want to include like um, a more specific word later to a specific questions or a specific information that we want to have, we can use W question like word. Where will you be living after you graduate from university? All right. So future perfect, what is the difference with this? So before we were talking about future continuous, we know the grammar according to that. And in this part, this future perfect is uh, very related to the previous one, but just maybe um, there is like a, a point of difference which is related to. This subject is focused on describing actions that will be finished in a specific moment of the future. So humans will have conquered Mars by 2050, right? So we are just uh, talking about a action that will happen later, yeah, in a specific time. So we'll have concurred. So we have the use of will plus have because we know that in the future perfect we have to use every single time. After that, the verb followed by ed, it is a regular verb, or in a different form, but we use the past participle of those verbs. I will have graduated by next year. And my dad will not have retired next year, he's 45. Will you have graduated by 2020? Where will you have traveled by 2020? Those are the different uh, sentences we can use, uh, like um, the positive one, the negative, yes, no questions, and WH. As you can see, all of those verbs are regular. That's why we use ED. But maybe it's kind of different if we're going to use an irregular verb because the conjugation of them are kind of just in a different way. So uh, let's see those phrasal verbs. When we talk about phrasal verbs, those are related to like a different uh, experiences, uh, like different situations we face. Right there, uh, we're going to see the phrasal verb that you know that is composed by a main verb after a preposition, right? So in here, in front of each of them, you are going to see the meaning of them. So let's see some examples. And taking into account that those phrasal verbs relate, are related to job interviews. Take on, to accept more work. Call off, to cancel an activity. Go over, to review something in detail. Put at with, to accept something that and continue working. Look cover to look at something to review it. All right, so let's think about some examples in order to make some sentences. 
So for example, you are in charge of doing a report and maybe your boss says, uh, okay, you're going to uh, submit this report in the platform today, right? So maybe you can say, okay, so I will take on doing it as soon as possible, all right? You are accepting doing this work, which is maybe like, like an extra work, but in a polite and in a positive way. So pencil in to arrange for something to happen or for someone to do something. Knock off to finish something quickly. Snow under grip to overwhelm someone with work. A stack in a root to be in monotony. Get the sack to be fired and head hunted to find job job candidates. All right. So we can see those phrasal verbs, the idea that you can include them into different sentences in order to use them in context. All right, so let's see the use of how plus adjectives plus adverbs. When do we use that? Well, in many situations, right? So we are going to focus on the grammar structure, like using how plus adjective plus verb to be plus the subject and the question mark, like how cold is Bogota? All right. So you are talking about what you are using an adjective. So how cold, how hot uh, is Medellin, yes? In order to ask for some specific information. So how adverb auxiliary do does we would subject verb in infinitive? How effectively do the students work? Yes, in that part we're using an adverb. Remember that the most of the adverbs are followed by ly, where some of them are written in the same form as the adjectives, but it depends according to the word that we are going to use. Okay? So those are just some examples. Uh, think um, about others in order just to have more examples. Model three tax. All right, so for today's session, we had our video class. The first workshop is called a job offer. Yes, that is going to be available from the 15th until October 29th. Later we have for an applying for a job. It's going to be available from the 30th of October until November the 19th. And our final exam is going to be available until November the 23rd. Something very important to mention is as soon as you can do um, percent the final exam, the better. Why? Because sometimes for the submission of the final grade of this course, it is better to do on time, yeah, because you know sometimes uh, the platform doesn't work very well, so I really want to suggest you doing as soon as possible all right so thank you so much for your attention if any question you have don't forget to contact me uh, i really want to show you the activities you start working with um, this model in order to let you know what objectives uh, we have for them so in here Okay, you're going to see the following information. Remember that we have a PDF file which contains like different information about the grammar part, right? So the most important thing is try to review and to have more examples in order to practice. So there are some infographics for Model T as well. So you can go there, just click on there and we are going to see the grammar and explanation for each of the topics previously explained, but also um, some examples, right? If needed. Okay, this one there is just one example. You just click on there and you can have a review according to each of those grammar topics. So, okay, we go back. And we're going to see the first activity, a job offer. We're at 
what's the idea according to this uh, workshop? All right. So first of all, you're going to simulate applying for a job offer by talking about strengths and weaknesses in order to make a cover letter. Yes? So please take into account what the information or what uh, a cover letter is. Yes? And later, we're going to interview someone using modal verbs in order to ask possible questions that can be found in a job interview. So in this part, I'm going to show you a word preview for this workshop. We have in total 13 questions, okay? Don't forget that in this part you're going to find some open questions and some of them have multiple choice and sometimes you have to fill in gaps. It depends according to the exercise we have. In this one, so it's a speaking part, we're going to start with it. This one is very similar to the quiz that we um, we make, yeah. Um, so record a 30 or 60 seconds audio and answer the following question. The idea is in here to make a video, not only an audio. So what will you have done by the end of this year and mention for activities using future part for you know that you have to use this grammar topic in order to answer this question, okay? So later, we're going to see our second activity, which is a forum, so. Applying for a job forum. So, open the file to see what a cover letter is right here, yes, there is explanation what it is, and later we're going to now click here to see a sample of how to do a cover letter. So here we have the meaning and later an example. After that, so you can see a guide yeah, to create your own cover letter. Taking into account the main components and the main characteristics of it. Later, you are going to choose one of the following job offers you feel interested in applying and click to see a job ad. So, a job advertisement. A salesman, a reporter, a graphic designer. You are going to click on them and you are going to choose the one that you like the most. For one, make a cover letter in order to simulate applying for a job position offer, bear in mind your strengths and weaknesses, referring to one of the previous list, and for doing so, upload your written task in PDF format according to the job position selected. So like this information has to be in a PDF. The letter must include five sentences using the vocabulary of strengths and weaknesses that we already talk and explain. Remember not to use your real personal information such as cell phone number, address and ID number. Why? Because it is better to avoid any kind of copying from somewhere. Uh, part two, assume the role of an interviewer by selecting one classmate's cover letter and propose four possible questions that could be asked in a job interview such questions must be include how plus adjective plus adverb or questions. So the idea is right here we're going just to um, take into account one cover letter and create those questions. How many? Four. Okay. So we were talking about the use of adjectives and adverbs in a question in order just to use this topic, all right? So here we have a word rubric in case you really want to see it. And there is going to be the final test at the end of this course. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your attention. Any question you have, don't forget to contact me. So have a great day today and let's talk later. Bye-bye, guys. See you.